Welcome all of you and thank you for being here. We're just hungry for Jesus <clears throat> and we want to begin to tune our hearts. We've been in Isaiah uh, and we want to just begin to tune our hearts to the Spirit of God to be able to uh, help us to um, grasp the spirit of the word and not just the letter, to grasp his heart and not just a teaching or a doctrine <clears throat> to, um, to find him in that way. And, and um, you know, I realize that in a class you're hearing a lot of information and, uh, and it's always a good thing that if, if the dove comes down on one or two things, that that's what you meditate on. The goal is not to understand everything. I, sh I usually share a lot of stuff. It's not to understand everything. It's to understand what the Spirit of God wants to say to you. And that would be, that could be very different um, within the, the group. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, stay open to the Holy Spirit. And don't get caught up in what you understand or you don't understand. Just listen and just have a heart of openness and say, you know, Lord, I just want to hear from you. So let's just start with that prayer. Father, we, uh, we're we not seeking the depth of, of doctrine or mysteries. We're seeking to know you. We're seeking to know your Son in the power of the Spirit of God. We're desiring that our heart can be communicated with from your heart. And we ask you to mold us, to melt us, to keep us open, uh, not just during this class, but as we walk and as we seek you. So bless each one that's on Move by your Spirit on them tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, well, <clears throat> we're trying to finish up Isaiah chapter 8. And I think we're going to do that tonight, but you know how that goes. <clears throat> but I think we will. And um, so, uh, what I want to do <clears throat> is read, read from Isaiah chapter 8. <clears throat> And read nine, verse 9 through 18. And these verses are the verses that we've been discussing and talking about. And in them has been that understanding of the, the sufferings of Christ, the corridor, going through uh, the sufferings of Christ by the Spirit of the Lamb. And, um, to, uh, um, and to submit ourselves to Adonai, meaning that name given to the person of the Godhead that is covering us while we're going through those sufferings. And a lot of Christians are totally unaware of Adonai or whatever, but uh, that's what we've been, what we've been doing. <clears throat> and so Isaiah is, is talking to, um, to, to Israel about Assyria and the sufferings that are coming. And explaining that they're coming from God, but the scriptures that we'll be reading from will be saying his heart. And that is, don't, don't fight, don't resist, don't do all of these things that we do to, you know, get out of it or to, to um, avoid problems or, <clears throat> or cope, but rather to be with him in a certain way. And that's what we want because... We do pretty good during our regular daily life when there's no problems or anything. I mean, we, we seem like really good Christians, all of us. <laughs> but when you you hit that wall or when you go into that, uh, that, that what we, we've been calling the corridor of sufferings, you go into those troubles and trials that are not troubles and trials in God's eyes. They're things meant for you to be able to give him something back in sacrifice and that is his son then that's when we need that's when we need these things it's in those places so 
We pray that the seeds go in. We pray that God is doing more than a sermon and a man talking, but his seeds by his spirit are going into us and they'll be able to be cultivated by the spirit of God um, at the right time and bring, bring forth fruit at the right time. All right, Isaiah 8, verse, starting verse 9. And here he, the, the, his spirit is angry with them because they're, <clears throat> they're not following him in this spirit. Associate yourselves, O ye people, and you shall be broken in pieces. Give ear, all ye of far countries. Gird yourselves, and you shall be broken in pieces. He's talking now to far countries that would come to help them, or people, we could say our neighbor, that's, or our Christian friend that comes and starts petting our flesh instead of saying, look, this is about Christ crucified. This is about the lamb in you. He's in you, and God wants him to come forth. And, and uh, uh, so <clears throat> that's what uh, that part of that verse uh, represents. Gird yourselves, and you shall be broken in pieces. Take counsel together, and it shall come to naught. Speak the word, meaning start talking with someone over it, <clears throat> and it shall not stand. For God is with us, and this is Emmanuel. For God is with us, and we're ignoring the God that's with us, and we're, we're looking to human and fleshly um, uh, armaments to gird ourselves against what's coming against us instead of allowing the Spirit of God to bring forth the nature of the Lamb. For the Lord spake thus to me with a strong hand, and instructed me that I should not walk in the way of this people, saying, Say ye not a confederacy to all them to whom this people shall say a confederacy, neither fear ye their fear, nor be afraid. Sanctify the Lord of hosts himself, and let him be your fear, and let him be your dread. And he shall be for a sanctuary, but for a stone of stumbling and for a rock of offense to both the houses of Israel, for a gin and for a snare to the inhabitants of Jerusalem. And many among them shall stumble and fall and be broken and be snared and be taken. Bind up the testimony. Seal the law among my disciples. And I will wait upon the Lord that hideth his face from the house of Jacob, and I will look for him. Behold, I and the children whom the Lord hath given me are for signs and for wonders in Israel from the Lord of hosts, which dwelleth in Mount Zion. <clears throat> All right, so we've, um, we've talked about that corridor. Uh, we've talked about the individual going through that. In that corridor being the sufferings related to uh, sufferings or uh, tribulation or affliction or whatever words you want to use. <clears throat> and that in this corridor, as it were, there is, we're supposed to go in there and in that do what Jesus did at the cross and and that was to lay down his life, to open not his mouth, to trust the Lord, to look to the Lord, to not call 10,000 angels, to not call somebody to help him, to get him off the cross or something like the one thief is doing. He's robbing God, trying to get Jesus to get them all off the cross. And Jesus came for that purpose. And so this, this corridor of suffering... And, and it relates to somebody over here. Usually we have over here this uh, um, devil uh, that is, um, let's see, I think I did him like this just to make sure that you knew he wasn't happy with you. I mean, he's just got a little body, though, you know. And he's, you know, uh, he's uh, um, the, the evildoer that's bringing this on you, but God is allowing this for his eternal purpose instead of a temporal 
even in, instead of even a temporal situation where we can stand up and, ch and say in front of all the congregation, the devil was attacking me or somebody mean was being mean to me and God delivered me. That's a temporal situation to release this spirit of Christ, the spirit of the lamb is eternal. It will reverberate. I mean, all the way down through till the day of judgment, when it says in Matthew 25, that he shall sit as judge as a shepherd and he shall divide the sheep from the goats or the sheep from the goats, sorry, right hand. On my right hand is the sheep and the left hand is the goats. And he'll say to the goats, depart from me. And he'll say to the sheep, you know, enter into my rest and my joy. Um, he's keeping track, not of all of the Christian deeds we do, but of the release, the releases that happen in our life of, of the Lamb. And you know what? Probably if you went through Hebrews 11, what we call the, the, uh, the, the Hall of Faith, <clears throat> you would find that most of the people mentioned there had to trust the Lord, like, like um, uh, Abraham, who offered up his son, and, and um, <clears throat> uh, Samson, who, who literally went into death that, his, that the enemies might go into his death instead of just killing them with his strength, you know. <clears throat> and um, so many examples there. Um, and yet, the, the mentions in their life are those things and God isn't mentioning, well, and there was the time he was really good and he helped a poor guy and gave him some money. And then there was this time that they did so and so. And, you know, it's like all of the things that we think are so big deal that's going to get us, uh, um, you know, something with God in, in, in the judgment are not even mentioned. And in fact, it's just in many of their lives, like, like Daniel, in many of their lives, there's only a few, you know, they may even have a big book, but there's only a few instances of their standing with the Lord in a certain spirit of releasing the nature of Christ that's preserved. And everything else, who knows? Who knows? You know, you and you, you could look at that and go, geez, they didn't do a lot for the Lord. You know, we, we think in terms of, of quality quantity instead of quality. So anyway, um, so I'll, I've talked about four different groups and I'm going to bring this up now because we are getting close to approaching, uh, going through some of Ezekiel in this class. We've gone through Jeremiah just to hit the same points on this this corridor thing of the sufferings of Christ and having the right spirit. Uh, we've, we're finishing up Isaiah, but I want to use some of what Isaiah has said to move us into the book of Ezekiel. And we won't cover the whole book. We're just going to hit some chapters that deal with this. So there's four groups being dealt with by Adonai, by the one who oversees us. Um, I'm looking for a color here that oversees us. Uh, while I'll just put these big arms while we're in the sufferings and who is there to support us and move not to deliver us from everything but to move in such a way that Christ can come out of us but if we don't know we have an Adonai and that's what his, his official term is in the Old Testament then we don't look to him we just we either look um, sort of to God you know, in a generic way, or we uh, are Jesus or whatever, but we don't understand the position that they have the, as a function within that realm. All right. So within this thing, four, four different groups or people, the person that's going through the suffering, that'd be you or me, or in this case, that's um, Israel. In Jeremiah's case, 
it was Judah. Um, so in Isaiah's case, uh, it's, uh, obviously it's Israel. Okay, so the person that's going through it, they're the one that's God, and that God is focused on. Number two is the evildoer who attacks. Well, we drew the evildoer here, but in this case, well, in the case of Jeremiah, when we covered that, it was Babylon. In this case, it's Assyria, and they're coming down to do the same thing that Babylon did. Okay, and then number three, those who are called to enter his sufferings, but resist by calling for helpers. Okay, and one of the things that we put off over here was a helper, and I don't remember exactly how I drew the helper, but I think I called it a H-E-L-L dash per. Because I put it in as hell, because this area is so big to God. It was big in Jeremiah, it's big in Isaiah, and it's going to be even bigger. Um, how do I say this? It's going to be even bigger for a different reason in Ezekiel as we get there. This help helper that comes in and says, oh, well, we'll help you, we'll do this, you know, and takes them out of the quarter of suffering, takes them out of being with the Lamb, takes them out of an eternal moment and puts it into an event that isn't going to count for anything, basically. I mean, it'll count for us because we go, whew, I didn't want to suffer and this person helped me and whatever. So <clears throat> uh, there's that. And in this, in, in um, uh, Isaiah, it's Egypt who is that helper, okay? And then number four, the people who come to the aid of the one helping or, or suffering, and that, that right there is the helper, that's, the, that's Egypt, okay? Um, so <clears throat> I want to particularly ask you to sort of focus in on those last two. The person that is called to go and give him the lamb at certain times, in certain situations that uh, would be, he could be turn those circumstances from just mere troubles and trials into the sufferings of Christ and become a sweet savor uh, and you remember it says that of us in Second Corinthians, but it's but it's Christ, it's the Lamb, that's that sweet savor coming out of us. Um, but that person does not; they re, they refuse to to stay in the sufferings. They just want deliverance instead of to give God something. They want God to give them a deliverance instead of them giving God the Lamb. Okay, so that's the that's the first one I want you to really try to focus on. And the second one is these helpers that mean well, and I'm sure in many cases, probably most cases, they mean well, but they don't understand Adonai. They don't understand a violation of Adonai. And, um, and so uh, they do, they continually take eternal things that could have been eternal and glorious to the Father to receive His Son and turn them into temporal circumstances. All right? And God is very angry in the book of Ezekiel with this. <clears throat> All right, so, um, I think last time we talked about uh, verse 16 through, um, oh, well, we did 16 through 18, I think. Bind up the testimony of Christ crucified. We put that in parenthesis. Seal the law among my disciples, and I will wait upon the Lord that hideth his face from the house of Jacob, and I will look for him. Behold, I and the children whom the Lord hath given me um, are for signs and are for wonders in Israel from the Lord of hosts which dwelleth in Mount Zion. And so he's, he's saying that when, you know, God started dealing with him then, Isaiah, 
And he's saying, look, I'm going to bind up this testimony. We went last week, I think it was, or the week before, went through the scriptures where the word testimony was used and found that it almost always had to do with laying down your life in a certain spirit. Um, and uh, and then he says, you know, I'm going to do I'm going to get that sealed inside of me and uh, I will wait for the Lord that hideth his face. Meaning when you're in that sufferings, it feels like God's not even there. And he intentionally does that. I mean, he did it with his very own son when he's hung on the cross. And Jesus says, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? But that's a picture for us to know it feels like he's not there. But then when he when he finishes it in right spirit, he says, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. And he gave up the ghost and he's with with the father. So um, that's that's what's going on here. The Lord hideth his face from the house of Jacob, but I will look for him. Behold, I and the children whom the Lord hath given. See, that's, who's that? Well, that's the ones who will, that's, if you will, it's the ones like over in Revelation 14. It says, these are they which follow the Lamb whithersoever he goeth. Okay, these are the children. These are the ones. Um and um, okay, so so I wanted to compare that to uh, something I read in Job, Book of Job. This is uh, Job thirty-four, <clears throat> and um, and he's also talking about this hiding and the hiding of his face and needing to see his face in the trial so that we can be in that image, see, in that image. And, um, and, uh, and what we're going to go through in Job and what we just kind of hit is going to be the emphasis of Ezekiel. Okay, so this is Job 34, verse 25 through 33. <clears throat> and it's speaking to those who resist going through that sufferings or get into there. They get into it. They don't finish it out in the spirit of the lamb, but they get into it and then they, they go, it's too much or, you know, I just need help or, you know, I, I'm going to call Sister Susie or somebody and, you know, go to my pastor and they'll, they'll you know, you know, they're, 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 it's going to be okay and you just get your faith up and, you know, your faith needs to be down, if you will, down at the cross where the where the Savior died, as the song says. <clears throat> All right. So this is God's, as it were, anger at at uh, the person that is trying to get out of being with the Lord in His Spirit and image. And verse 25 starts with, Therefore he knoweth their works, and he overturneth them in the night, that they, may, that they are destroyed. He striketh them as wicked men. They're not wicked men, but they're turning their back when God has brought them into a place where they could really be with him. They're turning their back on him and just wanting deliverance. And they're ignoring the person that God has sent to cover them, Adonai. <clears throat> he striketh them as wicked men in the open sight of others because they turned back from him. There in that corridor of sufferings, they, they turned back from being with that nature and just only, and much of Christianity is this way, but just only thought in terms of deliverance. Just deliver me, God, you know. And um, <clears throat> because they turned back from him and would not consider any of his ways. And his ways, Jesus, Jesus is the greatest example of that because he is the way. <clears throat> he says, no man cometh unto the Father but by me. Well, he's talking about 
through his death. He's not talking about, well, give me your hand and I'll take you and introduce you to the Father. And hello, Father, this is so and so. And see, that's all so wonderful and peaceful. But you can't get to the Father except by him and his death. And that bring, that's the thing that brought us all to God. <clears throat> um, would not consider his way. Verse 28, so that they caused the cry of the poor to come unto me, and he heareth the cry of the afflicted. Uh, and I wrote there, their resistance causes even more affliction, not ordered by God, but their own doing. Because they're, because they're probably, I mean, I don't know, remember if it says here that they've allowed a helper or not, but they're allowing other things to be brought in. Um, verse 29, when he giveth quietness, who then can make trouble? And when he hideth his face, who then can behold him? Whether it be done against a nation or against a man only, that the hypocrite reign not, lest the people be ensnared. Surely it is fit to be said unto God, I have borne chastisement, I will not offend any more. Surely it is, uh, and I wrote in here, surely it is right and correct for all who enter the corridor of sufferings to say, I will pass through in a right spirit. I will cease putting my hand to my own self-protection. Verse 32, that which I see not, teach thou me. If I have done iniquity, I will do no more. Meaning rebellion or lawlessness against you not just regular sins. You see, he's not saying if I've just done regular sins, uh, you know, I went out and did something I shouldn't have done. No, he's talking about this this spirit, this this rebellion against his Adonai, and and that's the usually the Holy Spirit who is our helper, and then we have a, a rebellion against the Lamb within us. I mean, there. are there are people that'll just downright, you know, say, well, that ain't true. We're supposed to be victorious. We're supposed to be. Well, we are victorious. We're seated in Christ. But that, the, the one we're seated in that it says in Ephesians <laughs> that we're seated in him, check it out in the book of Revelation. That's the slaughtered lamb. That's his nature. So, um, all right. So I'm about to wrap this up earlier. It looks like a little bit, and that, that would be fine. Um, so this is the closing verse in Isaiah 8 that we've been in for a long time. And doesn't it sound a lot like what we just read in Job? Let's listen. Isaiah 8, verse 33. This is God speaking after they've rebelled and said what they're going to do. Should it be according to thy mind? He will recompense it, whether thou refuse or whether thou choose, and not I. Therefore speak what thou knowest. And I wrote in here, should it be according to thy mind that God's purpose is only to bless and rescue? Should that be according to our mind that that's what his, we think that's what his only thing is, is that he wants, and if that was the case, I mean, look at, just, just look at all the disciples. I mean, they were, Paul, uh, Peter was hung on a cross upside down, and Paul had his head cut off, and all of this stuff. Jesus died an ignoble, ignoble death, and nobody knows that he was resurrected except those who embraced the lamb that was slaughtered. They all go, well, we defeated him. Well, they didn't defeat him. He's not defeated. And we're not defeated even in this. And, and you, you get that in Romans 8. I mean, it's really clear, you know. He's, he ta starts talking about we are sheep for the slaughter. We are this and that and all that kind of stuff. And he says, but we're more than conquerors in that. In that, it says, in that. Because none of this can separate us from the love of God. Whether it's persecution or death or, you know, all the things, things present, things to come, famine, all these things, they don't separate us. 
you know, and I know people that have gone through sufferings um, that God wanted, wanted his son from them. And that was their opportunity. And their response to it was that God is mean and cruel and he, you know, he's a horrible God and turned their back on the Lord, on Christianity and, you know, became one who spread rumors, as it were, like what, what happened on the on resurrection morning uh, when Jesus was raised from the dead, uh, about stuff that just wasn't true. It wasn't, it wasn't his heart. It's never, this, this has nothing to do with putting people who are not spiritually ready and able um, through that. It's about putting us in there because we don't know if we're ready or able. He does. We don't know. But it's also an opportunity. It's a test where God will find out where we stand. Can we, can we go into that suffering and fail God and, or, or just seek deliverance and that be the end of it? No, it's not the end of it. It's not the end of it. You know, um, he never gives up on us in that sense. He never gives up on his son that he wants out of us. Um, the good thing about God's test is you can take him over. That's pretty good. And you can take him over as many times as you want. So he's a good teacher. And we just need to understand his heart, though. That's the thing. See, someone can listen to these kind of teachings and go, well, I don't think I want that. Please, you know, all I got to say is please. This isn't about the virtue in suffering. That's not what I'm saying. This is about giving God his lamb spirit, just like in the Old Testament where they constantly offered up lambs. We can do that constantly. And we're supposed to be the fulfillment of all those shadows. But you never hear anybody talking about that. They just say, well, that's all gone, you know. Well, Jesus didn't say the, Jesus didn't say the Old Testament uh, is no good anymore. He said the Old Covenant is done. But the Old Testament was the Torah. And when, when Jesus rose from the dead and Paul and Peter and everybody preached, there was no New Testament book. There was only the Old Testament, and that's why, I mean, even the scriptures that I've read you tonight, I didn't take the time to say, that's in the book of Peter. This is in the book of Hebrews. This is, I, I, sorry, I didn't take the time to do that. But they, they went to the Old Testament and saw Jesus, and they saw the fulfillment of that being Christ, and then Christ still in us, of offering up not our stench, not our rebellion, not our uh, uh, desire always to be comfortable and be happy and don't ever let anything. Well, that's not, you know, if that was true, Jesus would have just stayed in heaven and said, okay, well, y'all work it out or something, but I'm going to be comfortable. You know, this throne up here is pretty comfortable. He didn't do that. He came down, became a man, became a servant became a criminal, became a dead man, all of it for someone else. And guess what? That same Jesus lives in you and I, and he'll continue to be that way for all eternity. We read the scripture, Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Well, yes, he is. <laughs> yes, he is. He's going to be, he's going to be selfless in us too just like he was before the foundation of the world and when he started creating everything and when he was uh, uh, over Israel and when he walked the shores of Galilee and when he came into us, he's going to be the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's going to have that heart, that selflessness, and he's going to want that to manifest in us as a, as a token of oneness with him more than a token but certainly a token of oneness with him manifestation of life
his life, lamb life. Okay.